Hello, hello, hello. Um, today, so if you watched my last video, I talked a lot about my experience so far moving to Chicago, and a huge piece of that has been making friends in a new city, making friends as an adult, and kind of what an eye-opening experience that's been for me. <sighs> it is not easy. I think that it's genuinely probably been the hardest part about moving. Um, it's just trying to make new friends, trying to feel socially comfortable again, trying to find a friend group and find people that are into the same things that I'm into. And uh, it's been difficult and I really, really, really want to talk about kind of my experience so far. And obviously I can only talk about my experience. I know there are so many different experiences out there and a lot of mine pertains to being a girl. I can really, I, I don't know what it's like to make friends as a guy because I'm a girl. So this is my perspective and my experience so far. I would love to know about y'all's experiences and y'all's tips and tricks in the comment section, but I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of backstory, kind of explain how it's been going, and then give you some of my like best tips and tricks so far for finding friends, making friends, keeping friends as an adult in a new city, all of the fun things. First and foremost, I have talked before about how incredible of a friend group I was leaving in Atlanta. So I had been friends with all of those people for like 10 years at this point. And we had like practically grown up together since we were like 19, 20 years old, which is crazy. So they've seen me through a lot of different phases. I've seen them through a lot of different phases. We really did grow up together. And I think one of the biggest realizations that I've had to have during this experience is that I'm never going to be able to recreate those friends. I'm never going to be able to recreate that friend group. One, because those people are so unique in and of themselves. I'm never gonna be able to find those exact people again, obviously. But two, I'm never gonna be able to recreate that history again. There's something to be said about knowing someone through such a transformative period of their life. Like nobody else is ever gonna know me during that period of my life. No one else is ever going to see those phases and see the growth and it's just, I'm never gonna have that again. And that is something that's so beautiful about those friendships and something that I cherish so much about those friendships, but also a really hard realization about finding new friends and finding a new friend group is that it's going to be different. It's not gonna feel like that, it's not gonna look like that. So I've had to kind of reframe my brain and to stop searching for recreations of those people and iterations of that friend group. And that kind of took me a second to wrap my head around because I'm like, why would I wanna be friends with anyone that's like not like those people? Those are my people. Like I had them for 10 years. Obviously the relationships that I had with them worked. Like of course I wanna find that again. But I also came to the realization that I'm not the same person I was when I was 19, 20 years old when I met all of these people. And therefore, it's a really beautiful thing that I get to choose my friends now as 27 year old Maddie that has gone through so much growth and has changed so much. I see the world through a different lens. I have different habits. I have different hobbies. I'm a different person. And therefore, I get to create a friend group tailored around who I am today. And I think that's really, really cool. Not to say that like, if I met all of my former friends now at 27, like I wouldn't be friends with them. I'm not saying that, I think they're all incredible people. I'm just into very different things now. I, I think differently, I act differently, I, I like to do different things. So it's exciting to get to build my people around the person that I am today. And that's a really good perspective shift, change. I think first and foremost, when talking about this topic, I cannot stress enough how hard it is. I don't think I 
realized or properly prepared myself for like just how difficult making friends as an adult in a new city would be and even more so how difficult maintaining friendships as an adult would be. And so I want to empathize and sympathize with everyone out there that is in my shoes or similar shoes. It is hard. Like do not be too hard on yourself. Don't feel like you're supposed to make friends your first week in a new place. Don't feel like, I you know I haven't had friends for six months, a year, whatever, there's something wrong with me. Don't think like that. It is so hard and I think it's really, really easy to get in your head about it and let it get to you and let it kind of take your self-confidence down and take your self-esteem down. I think that's really, really easy to let happen. And so I'm here to tell you, I feel you. It is not easy. I recognize that. It, it is such an intentional act to find friends, make friends, keep friends as an adult. I think one of the hardest parts I've realized about making friends as an adult is that so many people are already in established friend groups and it's really, really hard to break your way into an established friend group if you don't have kind of an anchor within that friend group. It's really hard to just kind of weasel your way into a friend group, right? That's that's really, really difficult. And a lot of people, once you have a solid friend group, they're not always looking to add people. It's not like they're out there just like looking for new friends. Okay, like let's add, da 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 Like a lot of people are very content with the friends that they have, the group that they have, the relationships that they've built, and I totally feel them. That was me before. Like I didn't really, I was never searching for new friends. If new friends happened upon me, like that was awesome and cool, but it was definitely not a priority in my life. So that makes it really difficult and I recognize that. But you really do have to be willing to put yourself out there. I've said this time and time again, making friends as an adult is literally like dating for friends. You're gonna go on a lot of bad first friend dates. You're gonna kiss a lot of frogs. You're gonna think you have these amazing friendships off rip and then they totally fizzle out. You have to really extend yourself. You have to be willing to say yes. You have to be willing to show up to what you're invited to, even if it's maybe not the most convenient thing for you. It's hard because when people invite you to things and you say no, you have to be careful to not get dubbed as the friend that says no because they will stop inviting you to things, which also makes it difficult because you're an adult and you have a life outside of making friends. And it's hard to realize that if making friends is a priority for you, it almost has to be your number one priority for a little while. It doesn't have to be your number one priority for nine months a year, but a couple months, like really make it your priority. You have to cultivate these relationships. You really have to make the time for these relationships. You have to make the effort to keep up with these relationships, to go out and meet people and put yourself in the right situations. It is super, super intentional and I don't think I realized, I didn't think friends are just gonna come and like knock on my door one day and say, hey, do you wanna be friends? I saw you walking in the hall. I didn't think it was gonna be like that. But like, I guess the last time I was really trying to make friends with people was college. And like, you're just surrounded by people 24 seven that are always looking to have a good time, that are always down to do something or go somewhere. And it's just easy to make friends in college. But as an adult, it's not like that. People have lives, people have responsibilities, people are busy. So it's really, you have to be really conscious to not find a friend and then allow two weeks, three weeks, a month to go by before you've seen each other because then it's like, how do you maintain a relationship like that? It is so much like dating, it's actually crazy. And everyone wishes that in dating or in friendships that you would just go out into the wild one day, see someone out and about at night and just hit it off 
and want to spend every moment from there on out with them and it just be like this little fairy tale in a rom-com but that's like just not reality it takes a long time there isn't the occasional time where you meet someone out and you're like yes I want to be friends with you and it's mutual and they want to be friends with you and get each other's contact and you just hit it off that does happen but I think it's definitely more of the exception rather than the rule and so I have been a huge proponent of utilizing the internet to cultivate relationships in the wild. All right, so here are some of my biggest tips and tricks, right? First and foremost, get on Facebook. Facebook groups are really, really a great way to meet people that are in the same headspace as you that are also looking to meet people. It kind of takes away the pressure of trying to um, infiltrate your way into a friend group when you're when you're looking for people that are also looking for friends. That helps a lot. So go to Facebook. I know when I was moving to Chicago, I found like Chicago girls group on Facebook, Chicago like women who are moving, okay, I don't even know what they're called, but they're all women's groups in Chicago for people that are looking for friends or that are moving or that are looking for roommates or things like that that are all kind of were in the same shoes as I was and it helped a lot. I mean, there are people constantly posting in these groups like, do you wanna go do this? Do you wanna go do that? Is anyone looking, like I'm looking for friends, here's pictures of me, here's a description of who I am, like reach out to me if you know we think we would be a good connection. There are so many people that are in the exact same shoes as you and I think it's really easy to feel like you're on an island when you don't have friends. It's really easy to like look outside and see all of these people doing these social things with friends and with friend groups and like you're kind of sitting in your own space and like don't have friends and it makes you feel like a leper. <laughs> you feel like you are on an island by yourself and no one understands what you're going through and I am here to tell you <laughs> if you get on Facebook, if you get on these groups and you see that you are so not alone. There are so many people looking to make friends. There are so many people in the exact same shoes as you. You just have to be willing to put yourself out there and introduce yourself and make those connections. And I think you'd be shocked at how many people want the exact same thing. So go to Facebook, look up your area, look up girls groups, guys groups, common interest groups. If you like to read, if you like to run, if you like to garden, if you like to dance, like whatever it is that you like to do, look for those kind of groups on Facebook and join them. And then just keep up with the, with the threads and kind of see who's commenting and who's wanting to like link up and like make plans and things like that. Facebook is a really good place to start. I will also say Instagram. Um, I found a couple of really good Chicago girls group Instagrams. There's Chicago girls who walk, which I think is a really good Instagram page specifically for girls that are looking to make connections in the city. And they like do group walks throughout the city. I know Atlanta has some groups like that as well that are really, really good for that. Um, so look on Instagram. Again, just look up your area, look up common interest groups on Instagram in your area, things like that. Instagram, Facebook, great places to start. Also, if you have not heard of the app Meetup, uh, I love the Meetup app. I think it is such a cool concept. So it's a literally a, an app made for common interest groups. So wherever you're located, there are groups of people that get together that like to do the same kinds of things, whether it be hiking or book clubs or running or, I mean, there's like crochet ones. There's ones for women in business. There's one for entrepreneurs, creators, like all types of common interest groups, really anything you can think of. There are groups on this app in your area for people that like to do the same things. Some of them are guys and girls, some of them are girls only, some of them are guys only. If you don't see the group that you're looking for, you can create your own group and people can find your group through there and you can start to you know, create events and do things centered around what you like to do and other people will join you. It's called Meetup 
and it's awesome and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you have not used it before, give it a try. Another one, and I think this is something that I am really about to utilize moving into the cold weather months because I'm gonna have to find some indoor active activities so I don't like absolutely lose my mind in, in Chicago winter. But intramural sports, uh, gyms, um, recreation activities, trivia, like routine based activities where you can go every week, every day, every couple times a week, and you kind of see the same people over and over again. That is a really good way to meet people that like to do the same things as you. Every city I know of in the U.S. has intramural sports. Kickball, softball, basketball, volleyball. You can join these teams and it is a great way to meet people. I know one of my friends in Atlanta that's lived in Atlanta literally his whole life joined a volleyball group last summer and made a whole new group of friends around his volleyball team, which I think is really, really cool. And I am definitely going to join some sports teams uh, when it warms up. <laughs> I'm not doing that right now. But intramural sports are a great way. I think the gym, if it's not your thing, I think it could help you maybe become your thing because I do think it's a good thing. But Going to a gym, getting a membership at a gym and becoming a regular at a gym is a great way to meet people. You see the same people on the same schedules, which is really cool. It makes it easier to form connections rather than seeing person one time and not again for another two months. A gym is a very routine based place. It's a great way to meet people. Rec, activi rec activities. So. I'm about to start rock climbing. That's about to become like one of my hobbies as well as kickboxing. Um, class pass, if you are in a new city or just like aren't very familiar with the fitness um, kind of world in your city, class pass is a great way to find studios and new hobbies in your area. So you can try out a bunch of different studios and kind of hop around and see what you like and what you don't like. Do you like Pilates? Do you like kickboxing? Do you like yoga? Do you like gym time? Like you can do all kinds of different things on class pass and it's a great way to not have to like start a membership somewhere and be locked in. So try class pass, but Trivia, another really, really cool way to meet people every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Monday. There are places around you, I guarantee it, that have trivia nights. And they're so fun. And they're a great way to go in and you see the same people every time you go. Or, you know, potentially some new people. But it's like, it's very routine based. These are all routine based activities where it becomes a part of your routine. You start to see the same kind of faces over and over again. It becomes a really easy way to start a conversation with someone because you obviously have the same interest. You're doing the same things over and over again with these same people. So once again, intramural sports, gyms, rec activities, class pass, trivia, routine based activities. All right, last and certainly not least, Bumble BFF. I cannot stress enough how awesome I think Bumble BFF is. I think that it's such a good way to meet people and not kind of like needle in a haystacking it. Like you really do kind of get, I mean, it's literally like dating, an online dating app, but it's for friendships. So you get to kind of see a little bit about a person, you get to kind of catch a vibe from them, and then you reach out to them and then you'll meet up and, you know, see if you're actually like a good friendship match, right? I have had pretty good success on Bumble BFF. I've also had, um, you know, like dating. I've had some first Bumble BFF dates that I was like, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Like we definitely don't hit a hit it off like I thought we would, but that's okay. On to the next one. And I've kept up with it fairly well. It's, it's kind of difficult in the beginning because you do have a 72 hour like time limit when you make a connection with someone, which I find to be kind of difficult, but 
if you're intentional about it and you keep up with it and you keep the conversations going and you make time and place plans with people, Bumble BFF is a really good way to meet people in your area. So some of my biggest tips for being successful on Bumble BFF, first and foremost, be yourself. You will save so much time if you're just yourself off rip. You want to find people that are like you, so just be yourself and find other people that are attracted to that, right? You will the last thing you want to do is try to be somebody that you think other girls are going to find cool on the app that you think is going to, you know, make people want to be your friend and that's like not actually who you are because then <laughs> sure you may have made that initial connection but are you going to be able to maintain that friendship no just don't even waste your time be yourself off rip you will find people that are into your vibe and vice versa second put your spotify on your bumble bff profile i think a person's music taste says so much about them and will says so much about like what our compatibility is going to be not to say that like people that have different music taste in me we won't be friends but like i can tell immediately by the music you listen to whether we are into kind of the same things whether we would like to go to the same bars or go to the same concerts or go to the same events like i can tell a lot of that by your music taste so put your spotify on there um bumble will also recommend people that have common interests with you including your music so if you have artists in common or genres in common it will recommend people to you based on that attach your spotify i think that's a really cool feature and third put your ig handle so this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves on like hinge or like bumble for dating i don't like it when guys put their social media on their dating app like what are you doing i don't know i think it's weird but on bumble bff i highly 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 recommend in the description section putting your ig handle and saying like dm me or like reach out to me on instagram because again that 72 hour time limit for getting back in touch with people can be difficult i've missed a lot of potential connections simply because the 72 hours times out on me but when i put my ig handle in there or when i see other people's ig handles in their description i'll reach out to them on there because there is no time limit and i know that people check their instagrams a lot more than they check their bumbles i have personally made most of my connections actually on Bumble have come through my Instagram. So put your IG handle on there. It's a good way for people to just be able to reach out to you directly without like having your cell phone number or something because that's a little weird. But put your IG handle in your description. It has helped me a ton. All right, last but not least, when it comes to Bumble, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. It is hard. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes energy, but I swear it works. Like make it an effort. Keep your notifications on. Make it an effort to check the app every day. Swipe a couple times. Just keep up with it. Keep yourself going. Don't drive yourself crazy with it. You will make friends, I promise, but Keep up to date with the app, keep up to date with the conversations, make a plan or two a week with someone new, just be intentional about it. I swear it works. So I met a girl, speaking of my Spotify, I met a girl on Bumble BFF. We shared like a lot of the same artists on our Spotify and I was going to a show that weekend by myself. I had bought the ticket and everything and was just gonna go by myself but I saw that she was interested in like the same kind of music. So I messaged her on her Instagram through Bumble and I was like, hey, like, you know, I, it seems like we're into a lot of the same things. Just wanted to reach out and introduce myself um, and see if, you know, you wanted to hang out or something this weekend. She reached back out to me and we like chit chatted a little bit. And then I was like, well, 
I'm actually going to this sh show, Closey, on Saturday, and it seems like you're into the same kind of music, if you would like at all be interested in going with me. And she said yes, and she bought a ticket and came to the show with me, and we went to dinner before, and it was such a fun night. So, met her through Bumble BFF, and then through her, she invited me to a party it was like a pregame for a bunch of girls that had all met through Bumble BFF. So it was like a Bumble BFF party, essentially. So I go to this pregame with her, meet, it was like a group of like 12 or 13 girls. It was a lot of girls. Again, you're gonna be, you're gonna be hanging out with a lot of people that are maybe not all your type of people. That's okay. That is okay. You have to put yourself out there. You've got to meet a lot of different people before you meet your people. So I go to this party, 10, 12, 13 girls. We're all pre-gaming and then we're going to go out to the bars that night. So I'm at this pre-game, love the girl that I met initially. And while I'm there, I meet another girl. And this is probably the first girl since I've been in Chicago that like the moment I met her, I was like, I want to be your friend. So we chit chatted throughout the night and like I could tell that we were both into similar things. We just kind of had the same like super chilled vibe about us. Neither of us drank, which was really cool. Um, it just, the energy was good, right? So the next day we all are talking in the group chat, like sending our information, saying our names, da 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 da. And this girl texts me separately and is like, hey, just wanted to reach out to you. It was really nice meeting you last night. Like, um, vibes were great, would love to hang out again. And I immediately was like, yes, because I felt the same way. Like we just hit it off. Like I felt like we were gonna be friends, right? Well then me and this girl have hung out on our own and I'm just like, this is a girl that I feel like I could be really good friends with. But I say all of this to say that like, it takes time. You're not always just gonna meet per someone the first weekend that you're on the apps or that you're trying to find friends. You're not necessarily just gonna meet someone and it just work out perfectly and sparks fly and you're, you're like inseparable. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes it builds upon each other. The the whole name of the game here is like, just say yes. Just put yourself out there. You never know who you're gonna meet, in what situations, doing what things, just say yes. Okay, my last, last, last piece of advice on this topic is to be careful when dating to not allow your significant other's friend group to become your whole friend group. It's important to have friends of your own and to not allow their friends to be your entire world. Because if you guys break up or if things go south, those are their friend at the end of the day. And the last thing that you want to have happen is for you to end up back at square one with no friends of your own and not only mourning the loss of the relationship, but also mourning the loss of all of the friends and kind of that lifestyle that you had. So I just caution you quickly to remember to build your own life outside of your relationship and don't solely use dating as a way to make friends. Okay, I know that was a ton. I know I just talked a lot and covered a lot, but this is a subject that I feel really passionate about because I know how difficult it is. I know how many people there are that are in the exact same boat that I am. I am here with you. I empathize, sympathize. I am going to kind of keep y'all up to date on how this all unfolds for me and just kind of more tips and tricks that I learn along the way. But as always, please drop your stories in the comments if you have any tips or tricks that have worked for you when it comes to making friends and keeping friends as an adult in a new city, whatever it may be. Please drop those in the comments. I love to hear from y'all. And I'll see you back next week.